A wonderful good evening to all of you, my friends and colleagues. So I'm back, and today's topic is uh, how to prepare for OSCE exams. As you know, uh, the OSCE dates have been released, and uh, about next month you're going to have your OSCE exams for the DNB uh, finals. So I thought, why not put together a few tips and tricks to make sure that you're on the right track and send you confidently to the exams. So let's go ahead. So this is the pattern, new pattern of the OSCE exams. You see this was introduced a few years back. So we have virtual OSCEs at, on a computer station, 20 OSCE stations of 5 marks each. Each would be of 4 minute duration. So you need to keep that in mind that the time available is less and that makes it 100 marks because 20 OSCE stations become 100 marks, 5 marks each. Then you have in the practical exam, two clinical case presentations of 50 marks each. Now this used to be different previously, they used to be uh, one long case, three short cases. Now there's no distinguishment, there is just two clinical case examinations. So they can be any, long, short, doesn't matter. And the marks allotted are 100 marks. So it still has a significant weightage. Then you have ward rounds, four ward rounds of 10 marks each as relevant for the speciality. So that gives you 40 marks. Then you have your Viva Voci. That is four Viva Voci stations, 15 marks per Viva station. So that is 60 marks. So you see they've divided all this so cleverly and you need to get marks in each station, each uh, aspect only then you'll be able to get a good decent mark because there are different examiners some are strict some are lenient so if you end up unlucky having a strict uh, invigilator or a strict examiner then he might award less marks now in that case who's going to pass the pass my person will be the guy who is consistently getting marks in each of the individual uh, aspects so that is why there is no room for error please don't think that 50 percent is passed so no you have to fight for each and every mark you have to leave an impression on the examiner at each and every point garner each and every mark that you can get okay so stay determined to do that so basically how you can prepare so i will focus on oskis uh, in this video so you have to practice past recall OSCEs, collect past recall OSCEs from your seniors and some are available online in mentor exam also they are available. You can prepare using those and revise the notes that you've made all throughout your preparation. So if you're giving practicals, it means you've passed your theory. So you have notes. So you know that OSCE is something that needs your theory part also. So revise that, revise your practical exam notes and your theory notes. And if there are some recent advances, recent new questions which have come in the theory, be sure to revise them as well because they might turn up in some OSCE. All right. And if you are not appearing for the exam right now, if you are in your first or second years, then you should know that you should at least start preparing in your second year. Earlier, the better because OSCE tests are they test your knowledge of theory and whether you are able to connect the dots in a clinical actual situation and use the information in your head to find a suitable answer connection or a solution so it can be a diagnosis it can be management so it is not bookish knowledge so that is what uh, the oski intends to find out are you a bookworm are you just having bookish knowledge or can you use that knowledge in actual scenario? So this integration takes time. You have to start preparing early. 
you cannot do great overnight study just today and get uh, great marks in oski but you can do great if you practice solving oskis sharpen your brain it is a skill that means you can still if you haven't prepared early you can still make a difference by looking at past oskis and solving oski marks which are provided in mentor exam and similar uh, books so what will help you pass the exam you first have to understand the format you have to familiarize yourself with the format and the structure of the exams that is what i intended to do i wanted to show you the pattern of the exam so a computer station will be having some images some videos and they'll ask you questions following that or they might give you a scenario about a person and his condition his complaints and ask you some questions and you need to answer them so that is how it goes so you have to familiarize yourself with common conditions and their presentation in your specialty so if you are an orthopedician you have to do, think about what questions they might ask clinical uh, diagnosis based on some uh, conditions which are common like uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy or uh, rheumatoid arthritis so those kind of things you have to familiarize yourself with so you need a vast knowledge for that it's called erudition a vast knowledge is important you need to have a mentor if not a mentor at least you should have a study group so you have to practice clinical skills and knowledge with a partner or a mentor this will help you get feedback on your performance and identify areas for improvement if you study alone it's it, it's good as long as you study it's good but if you want to improve have a study group or follow a mentor because then you'll know what actually is going wrong what you're lacking because you need that second perspective which you yourself cannot get you need somebody to tell you that other way of doing that is uh, taking mock oski exams or recall oski exams you should be able to diagnose conditions fast you should be having x ray findings at your tip you should be having mri radiology knowledge clinical images clinical scenarios and case presentations how they present usually so all these you should go through and revise you have to read up on common conditions and their management practice diagnosis and management skills with a partner or a mentor go through recent guidelines algorithms you might have made already for your theory exam go through them it's important you have to practice history taking skills Uh, read patient case studies and practice taking a complete history a uh, case based approach how to start and where what all questions to ask all that you need to do so this i mentioned earlier you have to start preparing early set aside enough time to study and practice we know that residency is not a joke you hardly get time to wake up you hardly get time to sleep but it is imperative those 3 years of residency or 2 years whichever primary or secondary you are you need to set aside some time to do this otherwise uh, it will be your own loss use a variety of study materials textbooks videos case studies and online resources so this uh, is mentor exam it's an app and they provide Uh, recall oskis and oski marks for various subjects you can go through them uh, th there are for anesthesia orthopedics pediatrics obstetrics gynecology and ophthalmology so you can send your institute reviews fellowship reviews and requests for similar content i am always there to help thank you very much do not forget to like share and subscribe the channel and uh, please let me know your feedback by posting comments below the description thank you very much dr leander